Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, it's a numbers game, isn't it? Just went down to Kmart and finally pulled something good. I always joke that if you want to, uh, if you want a pack to be open and not get anything, get me to open it. But today, I finally got something. Bought a Silver Tempest pack from the local Kmart. Well, a couple of dollars down there. Uh, the other two didn't get anything, but got the. I'll bring it nice and close so you can see. Got the uh, Rayquaza V Max from the Trainer Gallery. So, if I'm not mistaken, it must be the second most expensive card from the set behind the Lugia. So there we go. Finally got some. Anyway, as for today's video, something a little bit different today. I thought I'd just show you my booster box. I caught this. Uh, I caught this. It's not Pokemon. I'm not catching it. I bought this um, little turntable. So I thought it'd be a cool little uh, display piece to get the cards on. So not the cards, the booster boxes on. So I thought I'd run you through the booster boxes and uh, just give a little bit of commentary while we go. So without further ado, let's get stuck in and look at some booster boxes. So I thought we'd get started with the oldest booster box that I own, which is the Burning Shadows. Now this set sort of had a lot of promise back in the day. Um, obviously the main chase card inside here being the Charizard GX. Funny thing about, uh, well, most of my booster boxes is I've <laughs> pretty much had it all. I've pretty much had every booster box you can think of other than the very early sets, but basically from EX era onwards. And, you know, I predominantly used to open them and sell the cards on eBay. And in hindsight, obviously, I'd be an extremely wealthy person if I hadn't opened any of them. So, uh, geez, <clears throat> to get this whole thing started with the whole sealed collection, uh, collecting, I guess, from my perspective, like I offer any advice that would be, you know, diamond hands, isn't it? I wish, uh, I sort of wish I never opened anything. Yeah, I made a little bit of money here and there out of opening and selling cards on eBay, but, you know, it wouldn't be anywhere near the money I would have accumulated if I'd actually uh, kept things sealed. So I suppose a bit of advice while we get this, uh, get this started is keep things sealed. Most people are expecting massive returns inside three years, and if they don't see it, they're sort of, you know, jumping out of the hobby. So you know, if you can hold for a long period of time, you're going to be just fine. Anyway, next booster box. Now, the only tag team set that I'm missing is Team Up, which is a massive shame because we all know it's the most expensive booster box. But I just thought I'd give you a look from my oldest through to my newest. Uh, you know, these boxes now, Sun and Moon boxes, are starting to get on in age. And as we know, the prices are starting to tick up. Singles prices are worth really good dollars inside the uh, Sun and Moon era, particularly these tag team sets. Unbroken Bonds was probably, you know, at release one of the more popular ones, uh, mainly because it has that Charizard inside there. And now, you know, the tables have almost turned. I think uh, out of the four tag team sets, Unbroken Bonds is probably, oh, maybe on par with Unified Minds as the cheapest, but probably is the cheapest. The other three have sort of rose to a more stardom than what, Unbroken Bonds has, but beautiful set, beautiful looking box. I've spoken pretty heavily about Unified Minds. In fact, I did a whole video on it about, geez, in the early days of starting this channel back up, probably three months ago, and I spoke about how strong a set Unified Minds is and how even though it had jumped up to a fairly hefty price at the time three months ago, I think you could still sort of pick this up for 650 Australian, which is probably, you know, 380 us um whereas you know I, and i said my advice was 650 is undervalued australian dollars for this set or 380 us is undervalued for this set some of the alt arts inside it are incredible and i can just see it moving north really quickly and what do you know sometimes we get it right it has moved north really quickly um it's oh geez what's its current price i think it's nearly double that you know 12 probably 1100 1200 australian which is I don't know, I guess 650 US or something, 700 US is probably where this box price is sitting right at the moment. So these sun and moon sets starting to, uh, starting to tick up in price. Now, probably my most prized possession when it comes to a sealed booster box, which isn't even that much of a prized possession when you think of it. You know, there's people out here with EX Team Rocket return boxes and, uh, <laughs> you know, everything, Neo Revelation first editions and Neo Genesis first editions and, legendary collection booster boxes and Sky Ridge booster boxes. But for me, uh, I guess you'd almost call this my grail of booster boxes. I want to, of course, get some 
older heavier hitting ones it's just a hard pill to swallow for me because i used to own those boxes and i opened them and i wish i never did so it's just such a hard pill to swallow to go you know i bought these boxes for you know a lot of the times you know 200 australian dollars back in the day even back in like when are we probably rewinding the clock back to 2010 2011 i was still buying ex series boxes for you know early 200s or you know a case of six for for 1200 1500 australian um and you know opening them all and selling the <laughs> selling the insides gold star celebes and you know gold star rayquazas for stupidly low prices compared to what they're worth now so i wish i'd never opened them but i did we live and we learn so uh everything must start again and hopefully people can enjoy this journey with me but this is my most prized possession at the moment which is the cosmic eclipse box Stepping into Sword and Shield era, obviously Sword and Shield base set, really nice looking booster box, but you know we all know it doesn't have many heavy hitters inside here. Uh, what have we got? Snorlax. Uh, what else? Is Marnie inside it or is that Rebel Clash? I think Marnie's inside it. Anyway, not many heavy hitters inside here, but sort of compared to the rest of Sword and Shield era, quite short printed, and as a result, you know box prices have gone up pretty high. Similar to I really see this maybe following some sort of a similar trend to XY base in that, you know, that was short printed compared to the rest of XY, which is printed quite heavily because of the Pokemon Go craze, etc. So, hey, uh, would you invest in this? Oh, you feel like you might have missed the train on it, but still worth a shot. And you can see my beautiful Rebel Clash booster box sitting on here. Oh, I've missed the boat on that one, haven't I? I'm still, I'm going to buy it. I'm just biding my time it's uh again a hard pill to swallow because i missed it i should have bought it it's done probably the most appreciation it'll do over the next three to five years it's going to be like steam siege i imagine and sit around you know 350 400 us dollars a box for a long long time so it's a hard pill to swallow to buy it because i'd really just be buying it to collect it not because it's going to go up in value and here's the box that i've got the most of i've got a lot of darkness ablaze booster boxes uh I saw it similar to, I'd probably jump the gun. I saw it similar to XY Flashfire and I just thought, you know, Charizard base set, let's jump in heavy. Uh, there's going to be some, uh, you know, strong demand for this box throughout the COVID era. You know, hopefully a lot of that demand gets bought up, opened, and, you know, I'm one of the lucky people with sealed products sitting aside. And what do you know, I was completely wrong. So sometimes we don't always get it right. Sometimes we get it wrong. But, you know, Darkness Ablaze, it's a Charizard base set. Now it's been printed to oblivion. The box is nice. The box has also got Charizard on it. It's the first Charizard VMAX that you can pull. I know it's not worth heaps, but at the end of the day, I think it's still going to have a, a gradual rise up. So not the worst. And the next Sword and Shield set, Vivid Voltage, probably the booster box I own the second most of. And again, I thought, you know, I thought Darkness of Blaze, decent set at the time. And then I saw this come out and I thought, wow, this is, you know, one hell of a good set. It's as the title says, it's vivid, it's colourful, there's amazing rares inside it, there's a big chase card Pikachu. When's the last time we've had a big chase card Pikachu? Probably, what, Gold Star Pikachu from back in the EX era? So I thought, you know what, this is a good set, let's jump in heavy. And of course, it got printed to absolute oblivion. And the set everyone loves to hate on, Battle Styles, it was uh, tainted as the worst Sword and Shield set for a long period of time. But I don't actually think it's that bad. It's also the first introduction to Alternate Arts. It's one of those sets that sits with, you know, Battle Styles, Chilling Rain, Fusion Strike, Evolving Skies in that, like, bad pull rate era. And it sort of affects it a little bit, but... The alt arts inside here are a lot better than what you think. That Sleeping Tyranitar is really cool. That Ampoleon V is an absolute belter of a card. Like, look at that up close and see the artwork on it. Uh, there's some new mechanics bought out in this with single and rapid strikes. So there's a bit of, um, I suppose, nostalgia when it comes to gameplay that's going to be associated with it. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Chilling. Chilling Rain. The set that I probably own the third most booster boxes of. I invested pretty heavily into Chilling Rain, particularly when it got, I was, it was one that I was keeping a very close eye on. And by that, I mean, I was watching eBay auctions extremely closely. I was watching eBay stores and I was watching stock dwindle down until it got to the point where stores went from having 
150 boxes in stock to 30 boxes in stock to having four in stock to, okay, pricing still hasn't moved up much, but stores are pretty much out. And once they're out, it's going to move to single listings only. And that's when pricing is going to sort of jump up quite rapidly. So that's when I ended up buying a fair few Chilling Rain booster boxes. Really, really nice set. Speaking of really, really nice sets, this certainly overshadowed poor Chilling Rain there. It got left in its absolute dust with what is arguably the best sword and shield set. This set will go down. It'll be something incredibly, incredibly memorable, which I sort of talked about in my last video about memorable sets from an era. This is the set of sword and shield. I know the pull rates aren't great, but the set list is absolute fire. If you can still pick yourself up Evolving Skies booster boxes or you've got the gumption to do it, uh, it's the cheapest it's going to be. So... Uh, you know, there's a there's a lag now in upticks on prices because of the market conditions. I think, you know, things are going to stabilise over the next six months and now's the time to buy before things start upticking north again. Bowling Skies, Bell for a set. Fusion Strike, probably my favourite looking booster box from the whole Sword and Shield era. I love the psychic looking set. So I used to love Holon Phantoms from the EX era. I really liked that set. I liked XY um, <clears throat> Phantom Forces. Also a really nice set, this Fusion Strike set, the whole Ghost Psychic vibe around it. Gengar, new, just Espeon, really, really good looking set. And some underrated alt arts in there. Probably some, still some cheap alt arts, like that Celebi alt art. Have you seen that? That is one hell of a nice looking card, but really, really solid set. Pull rates may be affected a little bit. I spoke about that before, but one hell of a nice looking booster box. And here in Australia, they are still cheap. Like, 175 a box. Probably the most hyped up set of Sword and Shield, Brilliant Stars. Another Charizard based set with a Charizard alternate art. Charizard is, of course, on the box as well. It's the first introduction of Trainer Gallery throughout the Sword and Shield era. So it had everything in its path to make it one hell of a good box. And you know what? Or a good set, I should say. You know what it is? It like. It will go down when we think of memorable sets from Sword and Shield era. It will go down as a memorable set. Old Art Charizard, Trainer Gallery. Is there enough depth in its old arts? Is there enough, enough depth in the Trainer Gallery? You could argue it could be a little bit stronger and it lags behind Evo Skies, but it's still one hell of a nice looking box. Astral, the one set that hasn't seemed to have copped a big reprint yet this year. We've seen one for Lost Origin and Silver Tempest, but we're yet to see one this year. That is a big one for Astral Radiance. Um, there seems to be restocks still coming around. There seems to be restocks of single blisters, but I don't know. Grab yourself a... Uh, hedge your bets with this one. Grab yourself a box of Astral Radiance. doesn't have those heavy hitting chase cards like uh, your Lost Origin or your Evo Skies or even Fusion Strike, but it's a bit of an underrated set. You, you just never know what will happen. Similar thing, I've mentioned this before with uh, with Cosmic Eclipse. When that first came out, there wasn't like this big hitting chase card, but sometimes cards turn into big hitting chase cards, like some underrated cards that you wouldn't think. And the most expensive card of 2022 sits inside Lost Origin. That Giratina V alt art is such a special artwork from the Sword and Shield era. This is a beautiful looking box. It's been reprinted this year, dip prices ever so slightly. They've obviously come out under the new retail structure for uh, Scarlet and Violet era, which means booster boxes get wholesaled at a slightly higher price. But <clears throat> still, you know, if you can grab this, grab it. Like, if you've got diamond hands and you can hold these boxes for five years, they're already starting to look a little bit nostalgic, especially when I sit them on here and spin them around. You just think, well, in, this, in five years' time or eight years' time, these are going to be worth good dollars. And the final, Sword and Shield main set, Silver Tempest. Could argue lacks some depth. It's obviously got one hell of a heavy hitting Lugia inside there, which has taken a massive dive with the amount of uh, reprints it's had. People, or some people argue that the artwork of that Lugia isn't, you know, probably didn't live up to expectations. Maybe they could have done something a little bit different for an old art Lugia. But hey, I quite like it. I quite like it. It gives off some uh, shining Gyarados vibes from the Neo era. So. Same thing, if you can pick up some Silver Tempest booster boxes, I don't think it's a bad time to do it at all. And the new era, Scarlet and Violet, we got started. 
Bit of controversy, first move into silver borders for English Pokemon cards. New region, the uh, Paldea region. New starter trio, which is actually quite a cool starter trio. Certainly not my favourite. Like, I always fall back, obviously, to base <laughs> first set um, and Gen 2 as my favourite starters. Some cool cards to be pulled out of this. I pulled one of the alt arts, um, Maridon or Coridon. I can't remember exactly. I did pull one. I just opened maybe, you know, 20 packs just to get me underway and get a feel of the new Scarlet and Violet era. Pulled a couple of nice cards. Hit rates have started to get better during Scarlet and Violet. Cool looking Gyarados on the side of the box. And then we jump straight into Powdaya Evolved, which is probably a bit more even of a showcase of the Powdaya region's new Pokemon as, um, as Scarlet and Violet was. Really, really nice set. Some of the cards you can pull from this set are cool. It's got a lot more depth than Scarlet and Violet base in terms of, uh, in terms of hits. A lot of those illustration rares are really cool. The Tyranitar, um, that, <clears throat> that Tauros, that's a really nice looking card. The box itself, I suppose it doesn't really have a, a great deal going for it. It's got the, the newest gen Pokemon sort of, you know, uh, all over the box there. So see how it goes long term, but it feels like a little bit of a sleeper set from Scarlet and Violet. And the final booster box I've got, latest and greatest, other than Paradox Rift, which I haven't picked up yet, Obsidian Flames. Gives me Darkness Ablaze vibes in terms of obviously, you know, that Charizard based set. I said it when this when I did a little take on this set about you know a month and a half two months ago that you know singles prices will dip rapidly especially with those illustration rare Charizards and they have quite a nice looking box though Charizard on the box always sort of seems to bode well for the long term. Well, there we go. A little look into the booster box collection to summarise it all up. I guess you know everything that I've opened in the past. I wish I didn't. That really sums it all up because you know what you can just go buy your favorite singles like there is fun in opening it but open single packs that's that's my advice if you want to open something just go to your local store and buy blister packs like they're six dollars that came out here which is probably three dollars fifty or three dollars ninety nine in the us like just go buy singles packs and open them up and have <coughs> excuse me have fun but um when it comes to booster boxes keep them sealed like i've learned my lesson the hard way and probably it probably was COVID that opened my eyes up to that just how rapidly things can go up in price you know before COVID, things were sitting a little bit lower and i thought you know yeah i missed the boat on a lot of sets there were still expensive booster boxes but not like there is now so my plan is keep them sealed i want to get at least two booster boxes of every set that comes out one to display, one to possibly sell in the future to recoup the value that um, I've spent on it. If it doubles in price, you've recouped the cost of both of them. Then you've got a free one for your collection, so to speak. Um, so that's my plan. Question for everyone at home. What's your most prized possession when it comes to sealed booster boxes? I'm sure some people have some absolute, absolute doozies. Anyway, uh, we'll tick along and probably do a Elite Trainer Box version of this video at a later date. I'm Michael. This is Pokey Oz. Catch everyone next time.